A big focus of this first module and what is important to cover in an introductory module is this concept of weight bias and weight-based discrimination. And like we just saw in the last section, this is one of the main things that Obesity Canada wants to reduce because in a lot of ways it really negatively impacts our ability to do something about obesity. So what do I mean by weight stigma and what do I mean by weight bias? So weight stigma is a negative social outlook or belief and if we take that and we start stereotyping individuals with obesity according to this negative kind of outlook or belief about obesity that would be considered weight bias. If we then take that stereotyping and treat people with obesity unfairly, we would argue that that's called weight stigma or weight-based discrimination, which is unbelievably prevalent in Canada and in the world as well. Okay, so an example, look what he's done to himself. If only he had some self-control or wasn't so lazy. This is a pervasive, very common, type of belief that we have out there that is impacting our ability to get good care and just have a good quality of life for individuals with obesity. Okay, So obesity stigma can be something like obvious, like verbal weight stigma, where we say you know, some negative comments towards someone of a particular size. It could be physical uh, discrimination as well, where let's say an individual with obesity is bullied, um, which is perhaps more likely to happen in, in school, in elementary school and high school. We could also argue that obesity stigma is seen in how this world is kind of set up for smaller bodies and not necessarily larger bodies. So for instance, an individual with obesity, they might walk into a medical clinic and unlike this chair that doesn't have any, any side hand armrests, they would have these very small chairs with those armrests that are you know made for someone with a smaller body and they can't even sit in that chair, okay? Um, and also, uh, we see obesity stigma a lot in access to healthcare, where certain treatments might be more available or doctors might treat individuals that with obesity worse, um, and that affects uh, the quality of care that they do receive, okay? Weight-based discrimination is very common. It keeps increasing. It's increased since the 90s. And when I say it's comparable to race-based discrimination, what I mean is that it, the rates of it are similar to race-based discrimination. And of course, if we were saying something negative about someone or treating someone unfairly because they're a particular color or because they're of a particular religion or because of some other of their beliefs or you know the way they look, we would consider that awful. <laughs> However, it seems that it's very acceptable to treat people poorly or say negative things, make little comments, or just dislike or give people kind of the short end of the stick if they are potentially obese. And we're gonna give you lots of examples in this particular unit about how pervasive weight-based discrimination is in a lot of different areas. Before I move on, I think it's important to address there's a lot of people that think, yeah, well, you're obese and that's your fault that you're obese. You know, you ate too much and you didn't exercise enough, so it's like, it's your fault and you should deal with that. And if I make fun of you, it's okay because you chose to be that way. Hopefully, <laughs> by the end of the semester, you move past that belief that individuals with obesity have chosen to be that way. Okay. Yes, the factors that promote obesity are often related to the choices that we make, but right now our society is set up so that the choices that are in front of us often favor unhealthy choices. And it's unsurprising that individuals with obesity develop it. You know, it's no, not surprising at all that there is so much obesity in our society right now. There are some people that not only believe that it's okay to make fun of people for their weight, but there's also people that believe that, well, if I make fun of people for their weight, then they'll change. And I really want you to know that that's just not true. And that's not what the research suggests, okay? So in a review of the literature and of her own research, Rebecca Pohl is a big name in, um, in obesity stigma research. 
statement that was made in this paper, the one that you're going to be reading, is on the base of current findings, we propose that weight stigma is not a beneficial public health tool for reducing obesity. Rather, stigmatization of obese individuals threatens health, generates health disparities, and interferes with effective obesity interventions. These findings highlight weight stigma as both a social justice issue and a priority for public health. Okay? So shaming people for their weight, making fun of people for their weight, that rarely actually makes a difference in their, their weight. Okay? And it often promotes actually the opposite. We find that individuals that face weight-based discrimination are more likely to binge eat, are more likely to overeat, are less likely to stay in any type of weight loss intervention, and they often tend to gain more weight the more weight-based discrimination they feel. Okay? So before I move on on this concept, I just want to differentiate between implicit versus explicit um, weight bias, those negative attitudes and stereotypes that we ha might have about obese people, about individuals with obesity. An, an explicit bias, this is like the type of bias we know. Maybe we know we don't like certain people because of whatever, <laughs> because of the way they look in one way or another. Okay, that's an explicit bias. I'm conscious that I have that bias. Okay, An implicit bias, these are harder to tease out. An implicit bias is a bias that we don't realize we have. So for instance, you might believe that you don't have explicit bias against individuals with obesity. That said, subtly, something in you doesn't particularly perhaps like individuals with obesity or you feel negatively towards them without even kind of being conscious it's not really in this prefrontal like awareness cortex it's a little bit more subconscious than that okay and that implicit bias might make you favor individuals that are lighter over individuals with obesity you might be more likely to be nicer to them right? Individuals that are lighter compared to individuals with obesity. And this is something that, like I said, goes on below the surface, but is reinforced a lot of times by these um, messages that we get um, in the media and other places. So what I want you to do is to take this test, the implicit, um, the Harvard Implicit Biases Test. Um, it'll take about 10 minutes, but it'll give you an idea of whether you have implicit biases against individuals with obesity. And I'll be honest, you probably do. And if you do, I do. I teach a course on obesity and I have implicit biases. Okay, It's important to realize you have these implicit biases because the only way to make a change in something is to realize you have them. Okay, So have a look and just, you know, without judgment, if you have implicit or explicit biases, it's good to know that because that frames often how you look at individuals with obesity and even how you approach this course as well. So there's plenty of examples of explicit weight-based discrimination. Some examples at work is that people might use derogatory humor. They might treat individuals with obesity more poorly. There's been a lot of studies to show that if two candidates are equally qualified, the individual that's leaner is more likely to get that job um, and individuals with obesity are less likely to be considered for promotions as well. Also weight bias is often experienced at the hands of fitness professionals, um, both implicit and explicit weight bias. So uh, individuals that do work in the fitness industry, maybe because they have a control on their own fitness and weight, they might look at individuals with obesity and think you know they're lazy or physically unattractive or they might just not want to work with them because you know they they are afraid that you know they might not have the same commitment as others and part of the problem is is that let's say someone new comes to work with you you know you're already making assumptions about what that person who that person is and what they can and can't do right and that's going to affect the kind of care that you give them and it's also going to affect that person's experience with the fitness industry or the healthcare industry Okay, and that's why we really need to be aware of these so we can treat everyone as equal because we all are equal at the end of the day. Healthcare providers are one of the most common sources of weight stigma. There are lots of examples of this. Some of the research has shown that uh, healthcare providers, including doctors and nurses, may think that individuals with obesity are bad patients. 
that they don't comply, they're unmotivated, they're frustrating to treat. They might go as far as also have negative personal feelings towards individuals with, with obesity. They might think that they're ugly or lazy or sloppy or unattractive or less healthy. Um, they might think it's more acceptable to say things that are derogatory to, to them. And healthcare practitioners like doctors might feel that working with individuals with obesity makes them feel like bad doctors because they don't know how to treat them and that their efforts are less effective. And I would say this is a bit of a failure of our medical system right now and the fact that there's very little education around obesity in medical uh, schools. It's alarming how little there is of obesity education. You guys are getting more of an obesity education in this course than individuals often get in med school. So to give some uh, evidence to back this up, there was a web-based survey that was completed by first-year medical students and they looked at, they used both that um, implicit biases test, the Harvard one that I talked about earlier, and um, some explicit tests like the anti-fat attitudes test too. And what they found is the vast majority of these medical students had either strong or moderate or even slight anti-fat bias. And that was either explicit, okay, or they had implicit bias as well. So this weight bias is pervasive, these anti-fat attitudes are pervasive, and again, it can affect the quality of care that individuals with obesity receive. So in that study, they found that about 15 to 20 percent of those medical students, first-year medical students, had explicit anti-fat attitudes, saying things like, I really, agreeing with statements like, I really don't like fat people much, I have a hard time taking fat people seriously, and fat people make me somewhat uncomfortable, okay? A lot of them, a high percentage of them, slightly or moderately or strongly agreed with statements that were really blame-oriented on individuals with obesity. And again, the majority of those medical students either slightly, moderately, or strongly agreed that they had, there was a fear around their own personal weight um, changes. So why I bring this up is I really want to emphasize how pervasive weight bias is amongst the medical community and it's something that we would really like to see decrease because it affects the quality of care again that individuals with obesity receive, okay? So specifically, it affects this patient-centered communication and care, something that we talked a lot about in uh, BPK 340. So what is this patient-centered communication and care? This is care that establishes a partnership among practitioners, patients, and their family, okay? And to ensure the decisions respect patients' wants, needs, and preferences, and that their patients have the education and support they need to make decisions and participate in their own care. So these anti-fat attitudes, both explicit and implicit, they affect that communication between these healthcare practitioners and their patients and the quality of care they receive. And it, it stops being like a conversation and more of perhaps a judgment-based or a dismissive-based type of care. That said, you might be thinking, so what? Why is it a problem if practitioners or health promoters have implicit or explicit anti-fat bias? Well, part of the problem is that this weight stigma has a lot of individual health consequences. We see individuals that experience weight bias, they're actually more likely to have unhealthy eating and lower physical activity. They're also more likely to have negative psychological impacts, have stress-induced path pathophysiology. So because that weight-based discrimination might increase their stress levels, there's definitely correlations between stress and various metabolic effect, negative metabolic effects on the body. And the care they receive, like I keep saying, might be lower as well, okay? Also, as far as public health goes and our approach to obesity at the public health level, you know, we might just disregard some of the environmental factors, which are huge in promoting obesity. If we just look at it as it's an individual's fault, well, then why would the food industry change? Why would we make the food industry change? Why would we change our obesogenic environment if it's just the individual's fault? Okay. 
We might not try to prevent it at all. And again, this leads to those health disparities we see between individuals with obesity and, and leaner individuals. And it can also promote social inequalities. So for instance, like I said, uh, individuals with obesity are less likely to get a promotions or less likely to get hired. Um, and these things can affect their income you know, which can affect their socioeconomic status. And as we learn in 340, that has a lot of potential effects on their overall health and well-being. So this model here speaks to the same concept again, that if an individual has obesity and that obesity, as far as a healthcare practitioner, is being filtered through negative attitudes and stigma from that health practitioner, and that patient goes to a medical office and there's threatening environmental cues, for instance, nowhere to sit comfortably or everything being made for a small body it might increase the stress that patient feels when he, they are going for care it might affect the communication between the patient and that healthcare practitioner okay and as far as the practitioner goes if I'm a practitioner and I have weight bias against a person I might stereotype them and I might be like well all your problems are due to your weight and I might give you just poor medical decision making. You know, you might come in with a problem and I say, well, it's because of your weight. And instead of actually figuring out what the problem's due to, I just blame everything on your weight. Okay, and as it says here, this is all affecting patient outcomes. There have now been lots of studies into uh, weight bias, and when we synthesize that evidence, there is moderate to strong evidence about a number of things on this slide. So for instance, there's moderate evidence to support that individuals with obesity perceive weight bias from their family and friends, unsurprising. There's also strong evidence to suggest that overweight and, and individuals individuals that are overweight and obese in films and TV are often stigmatized. I noticed that like in films and TV, like fat jokes are just like, okay, they're like just part of it. You know, I just read a documentary on John Candy, if you remember our beloved <laughs> comedian John Candy, Canadian, you know, all the jokes that were ever written for him, he laments that, you know, he was funny period, but all the jokes that were often written for him were weight-based jokes. There's also weight bias in news and media and in uh, children's media as well, okay? Something else that I want to highlight here is that there's strong evidence to suggest that weight bias contributes to these maladaptive eating behaviors. So all that, putting all that together, I really want to emphasize that although a lot of people think that weight bias, weight stigma is acceptable, it's kind of funny, people with obesity deserve it because they chose to be that way, the evidence doesn't support that those kind of attitudes are making any good difference. And in fact, they often promote disparities in access to health and access to other care between individuals with obesity and individuals that don't have obesity. And that's why the Canadian Obesity Network advocates for decreasing weight stigma as part of their main mandate. Because unless we start changing these attitudes in the media, in the fitness industry, amongst doctors and other health healthcare practitioners, this weight bias is going to stick around and it's going to negatively impact the kind of care that individuals with obesity get, but also their experience in this world that, that individuals with obesity get as well. So hopefully, <laughs> by the end of the semester, we can break down some of our own explicit and implicit biases and start to look at individuals with obesity as people, you know, that are dealing with a disease.